Hey guys, what's going on? This is Knife Standards. Today I have an unboxing to do. This is gonna be an unboxing, first impressions, and uh, kind of a short overview of a knife that I just got in from Kunwoo. I am sure you guys can hear the construction outside. It is super loud, so hopefully it's not that loud for you guys and you can hear what I'm saying, but for me, it's very loud. Anyway, um, so I had a knife in from Kunwoo last week. It was the Kunwoo Chad and it was cool. Uh, not really my style per se, but I, I could appreciate some things about it. And uh, now I have another one in from Kunwoo. Shout out to Rob's Nerdy Knives for sending this my way. You can see that someone sliced into the box, probably opening up the package. This is part of a pass around group. So again, shout out to Rob's Nerdy Knives for sending it over. And this will only be with me for, I don't know, a couple days and then I'll be sending it back out to the next reviewer. So let's get into it. Uh, before we do, please follow me at Knife Standards. You can follow me on Instagram. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel for a lot more knife content and weekly knife reviews. And of course, you can check out my designs at knifestandards.com. The RR standards are sold out. I have RR stations available in Vanex Super Clean Blade Steel. So definitely check those out at knifestandards.com. And I have a new model coming. Uh, I haven't really announced it yet fully. I haven't, but I, I did a little post on Instagram, but um, the new model is the RR3. So um, I'll be doing a video on that pretty soon, probably in the next day or two. So keep an eye out for that. All right, let's go ahead and check the Kunwoo. I don't even know what this is. The Kunwoo Django. Okay, I think I remember this. Sometimes um, I will see a knife and I will want to check it out. Um, and I don't get the opportunity to check it out for like weeks or months, uh, you know, until weeks or months later. And that is totally fine. Um, but sometimes I forget what I, what I'm getting, what, what, what is being passed around, what is on the way to me, what I'm reviewing. Um, and again, I don't know the price of this. Usually I only know the prices. Sometimes I know the prices of these, but usually like this is my knife. So I know the price of it. I paid for it. Um, but I'm not sure how much the Kunwoo Django, is it the Django? Yeah, the Kunwoo Django, I'm not sure how much that goes for. Anyway, we have a wire clip. I do not like this style of wire clip. This gives wire clips a bad name. Um, this kind of swooped kind of duckbill thing going on, not my jam. We have this pouch, I think there's a cloth in there. Let's go ahead and get that out of the way. And let's check out the knife. Okay, nice. Feels very solid, substantial. Got the milled clip on. Um, so they put it in the slots. That looks very familiar. <laughs> they put it in the slots where the wire clip goes. I've seen that before. Um, the, okay, so you got the axis style lock, machined satin on the blade. A really super aggressive milling pattern. Got this diamond texture. It is this close to being sharp. Super close, but it's not. It's not sharp, but it, it but it is very aggressive. I prefer my milling to be just a little bit more subtle. Um, and we can compare these two diamond textures. This one is just a little bit easier to handle, a little bit more subtle. This one is a little bit rougher, a little bit more, well, you know, textured, which I'm sure a lot of people will like. For me, for my hand, just feeling it, you know, without actually holding the knife, feels a little bit aggressive for my hand. Um, but we'll see how it is once I get this knife opened up. We got T8s, uh, the clip is reversible. I don't know what that, symbol is, but I'm, I guess it's their, is it their logo? Yeah, I guess it is their logo. Oh, it's a K. Ah, Kunwoo got it. Axis style lock. Um, Kunwoo does nail the axis style locks. Now the, I wasn't a huge fan of it on the Chad. I feel like it was kind of out of place on the Chad. I would have liked to have seen the Chad be a liner lock or even a button lock would have been really cool. Um, I don't think that needed the axis lock, especially because they do it so well. Um, I'm not sure if they did the Asher knives that I've handled, but I know that they do some OEM work for Asher. And if you haven't checked out Asher's stuff, it's 
really damn good. And the access style locks are very good from him. Um, so anyway, let's get it flicked open. I'm going to try the middle finger flick. A little bit worried about it because sometimes that doesn't work super well with access style locks because you really kind of need that detent to break. But let's see. No, it worked great. That was very satisfying, actually. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. So yeah, the action is really great. Really good on the axis lock and middle finger flick works beautifully. So that's actually good. They nailed, they nailed that. I feel like, I don't know if it's the size of the blade um, because the Chad blade is kind of, you know, just a bigger, it was a longer, bigger blade, but the axis lock definitely works better on this style of knife, on this blade. It fits this better. Um, I don't think they need that on the Chad. We have pretty cool blade shape. I'd call this a clip point, full flat grind machine satin. So the difference between, cause I've gotten this question a few times, the difference between the machine satin and like a belt satin, I'll just go ahead and show. So this is a belt satin that's been stonewashed, but there you go, you can see belt satin grind lines. Usually these, this one is done by two hands, by transparent knives, but usually um, these are done by hand when you see this belt satin, not always. Um, the RR standards were done one by one by hand. This is done by uh, Brian over at Transparent Knives by hand. You get these really beautiful grind lines. Um, and this is machine satin. So it is not done by hand. You don't get those, that same aesthetic. Um, it's still nice. But usually with the belt satin, you're going to get a higher price point. Um, and with the machine satin, this is more affordable. So again, for price, I'm going to guess that this is going to be around $200, I would hope. And I definitely, I already like this better. That I, just because of the blade shape, the, uh, the shocker I did a video on uh, a few days ago kind of comes to mind. And this is just, this just feels more substantial this feels like they put more thought into it except for the name i don't i don't get the name but um although i do like django better than the shocker anyway um but yeah this just feels like a more well-built better thought out knife um, and the blade shape has some similarities to the shocker i should have done a comparison but i had to send that one out and this one just came in today so um this is definitely well made, you know, because sometimes you hold a knife or you handle it and you just think it just, they didn't put a lot of time or thought into it or the fit and finish isn't quite there. They did on this one. The fit and the finish is great. Um, I would say a, a whole level above the, the shocker. So anyway, um, I don't know how much the shocker is. I don't know how much this is, but I would hope this is right around 200. And I, I hope the shocker is less, but I, I think someone commented and said that it's more. Anyway, I don't wanna get too distracted. Um, as far as blade steel goes, what do we got? Elmax, okay, nice. Elmax seems to be the uh, flavor of the, I was gonna say of the month, but of like the last six months or, or so. The fuller looks cool, I like that. I think it's just for aesthetics, but let's see if I can flick the fuller. Nah, not really. So middle finger flick in the opening hole. I do like this style of opening hole. You got a little triangle action going on. Um, the plunge grind looks good. Really generous finger choil. Ergos feel pretty good. It definitely feels better in hand. And I mean, the, the, the textured milling feels better in hand now that I'm actually holding the knife and not just, you know, <laughs> here it kind of feels like a cheese grater. And here it just feels like, oh, I have a little bit of extra grip. The jimping feels good. Um, there's some nice internal milling on the inside. Got the lanyard hole there if you need it. I don't. I think overall this is cool. I, I think the um, access lock is really well done. They're doing a great job with the access locks or their style, their version of it. Middle finger flick works great. I think a lot of companies need to be or they, they should be more careful with putting the access lock on a knife that is going to be middle finger flicked because you can feel, you know, it's not really a detent, but you can feel that resistance. Um, and it either feels great 
like it does on this one or it feels really kind of mushy and shitty. So um, this feels pretty good. Uh, I think this is nice. Well done. I like this better than the Chad. I think it's also more unique than the Chad. Um, the names though, I, I just don't, I feel like lately, um, this is not like a rant video, but um, the names, I, I don't know. I just, the Django and the Chad and the, you either get, I feel like lately you either get random names there's three categories of naming knives. You either get random names, like the Chad and Django. You get like the Riot names, where it's like the Riot, you know, nine four one P. You're like, well, I don't know what that means. I think uh, who else does that? Artisan Cutlery does that sometimes. Um, or you get names that everyone has the same name, like the Evo. Like there's like ten different knives that are called the Evo. Um, or you get names that have a meaning and a story behind them, which I think is the way to go. I think that means more, definitely means more to me, but can't always have it that way. Uh, I definitely like a nice story behind my names, but um, I think for Kunwoo, they're coming out with so many models. They just, you know, they're cranking out models because they are their own OEM or they're working with their own machine shops. They're not having the knives made necessarily. They're making their own designs, their own knives. So they come up with the design, boom, they get it made really quickly, boom, they name it and they crank it out, which is cool. That's definitely nice. It's a nice problem to have. Um, anyway, here we go. We got the Kunwoo Django. I like it. I think it's cool. I like it better than the Chad and I'm better than the Shocker. One of my, um, out of the last like three or four or five knives I've handled, this is probably... This is probably my favorite. I was going to say one of my favorites, but no, this is probably my favorite out of the last few. Um, yeah, there we go. I think that just about wraps it up. I will catch you guys later.